Well, when I'm cooking, I use a lot of bottled water. If I don't have the gallons, I have to use the, the bottles. And that's almost a half of a case of water to use with the bottles, because you have to continue to use water to keep the food from burning. Well, after four years, it really feels like we're nothing. I mean, Flint doesn't matter. Who doesn't deserve water? Who deserves a better quality of water than others? Everybody needs water. You can't turn anyone away and you can't devalue the human race. Water is life and when people are denied access to clean water, that's like the ultimate sin. It's amazing how we take water for granted. It's when you're in situations like this that you really see how often you use water. This has never happened in America, ever. Ever. We are in Flint, Michigan. Flint, Michigan native, and I've been a native of Flint, Michigan my whole life. I was born and raised here. I'm a Flint stone, I guess, if you will. There's no other place I would rather call home. I believe in Flint. Proud Flint resident. This is my home. This is the north end of Flint, and a lot of the, the residents abandoned their homes, and most of the homes have been torn down. People just walked away from them. Flint was a beautiful place to live when I was growing up. Flint was a booming town at one time. It looks like an ordinary day in the USA, but in the city of Flint, Michigan, all is excitement. The city has been through tremendous ups and downs, through drugs and violence and now the water crisis. To live here, you have to have tough skin. You have to know how to adapt to change and just kind of roll with the punches. When we speak about justice, it speaks about our context of a community or neighborhood who loves one another, which is rooted and nurtured in God's character. And when we display that type of love, God calls it justice. The church has always been a community base to bring resources to people that's lacking. It was evident that needs were to be provided for water. I've been serving here at this church for five years, and upon our assignment here, it was right at the beginning of the water crisis of April 2014. And Flint, poor Flint, challenges the conscience of America that these children would be subjected uh, to that poisonous water affecting their brain and their futures. People around the world think that the problem in Flint is totally just non-existent anymore. They think that it got solved and that that's why it's not being reported on. And it's just not true. The problems have not been solved. People cannot drink the water. It's, it's just that simple. I could taste it and I could smell it. I refuse to drink it. I think that after you continue to watch all the details of what took place and how things would be unfolded, it's clear this was not a mistake. I just believe in being honest. So when I'm asked if I drink the water every day and I do drink the water every day, then I share that. Did you ever have rashes? Did your children ever have rashes? No, they didn't. Any hair loss? No. Looking back though, that sent the message to ordinary constituents in Flint that the water was okay to drink. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what's you know, so heartbreaking about what's happened. The scary thing is that we don't know the impact of how it affects our children and even our lives. We have people that are suffering and dying with no explanation. I want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Flynn is still very much in crisis mode. 
since the water crisis came about, we have been able to really be on the front lines in terms of meeting the needs of the residents with bottled water. We've been giving out water every week um, for the past three years to the residents of Flint. They have been doing a great job of making sure that the community has water. I think that trying to provide water gives people some form of dignity. Everybody needs water. We used to do five days a week. Now we're down to three, um, simply because the donation amount of water that we've received have kind of dwindled down. Many people will believe the water demand is not high as it is now. If the need wasn't that great, who would sit for hours for uh, 240 packs of water? All right, you all set. Thank you. It makes everything harder when you're trying to survive or buy the water when you don't already have money for the things that you need. And then to still, on top of that, be required to pay water bills, it's ridiculous. It's so disheartening when we have to turn people away that's been in line for maybe two or three hours just waiting for water because we ran out. It's just been declining for the past five years. It started off at like five million bottles the first year and then it was like three and then two and then this year it's going down to like 800,000. So it's like they need to have a backbone for them to rely on. We need help because uh, our man force here at the church no spring chickens, you know. We have six deacons that's working now. The youngest one is 58. The rest of them are in the 70s. These guys have worked all their lives, and now they're back to hours of rigorous work again. Oh, yeah. How are you? Oh, so good to see you. I'm 70 years old. You know, it was so good to be able to help, but that water's pretty heavy, I'll tell you. They're there giving out water until it literally runs out, like we're talking five million bottles of water. We need something positive, complete, resolved. We need a solution. About two years ago, I started looking at how we could be more of a service. From an engineering standpoint, I'd start to help uh, places that were having, were having stressed water issues. And so that's why we came to Flint. Our work kind of spoke for itself, and it, it got the attention of Jaden and Drew. They had heard about some of the work that we have already been doing here at the church and reached out to us in a very grassroots way. It wasn't so much as to what can we do for you. It was more so what can we do together. And so they came down, we had a meeting, and just kind of brainstormed some ideas, bounced some ideas off, and then came the water box. This machine can filter 10 gallons every 60 seconds. When this crisis hit, we couldn't necessarily fend for our own city with our own resources. And so for me, my mindset is that if something else happened, we can build from within. We're kind of trying to give First Trinity their own source of clean water. Instead of having to rely on donations of water or buying water. This is tested by the church on site here. Once we figured out what the actual water box will do, it was time for the engineering component to take place. Our challenge was to take a water filtration system and package it into a container that could be rolled around easily by the folks at the church. Essentially, this is a loop. Water will come in the side of the system from the city or from any other source, so we'd be able to plug it into a reservoir or a holding tank. It'll go through three filters with three different stages, a carbon filter and two microfilters. It will then run through a UV lamp. The UV will take out any bacteria or biological elements that might contaminate the water. And then it will go and be dispersed either through a sink where people can walk up and fill up bottles or a tap on the side of the box. I mean, Jeremy was running the numbers with the system that they have, if you run it nine to five, for a full year that would produce the equivalent of like 1.5 million bottles of water, something along those lines. 
It was very important to us that the water was tested and the residents would be able to see the results of the water that was being tested. Part of the engineering is, hey, can we build this contraption, but how can we engineer a sustainable maintenance program with that as well so that it can scale and become something that people can be able to learn to take care of on their own and become experts in their own water box. I'm very, very surprised as well as humbled that they would uh, make such a gesture. This water box has expanded our reach. We've been able to service so many more families, so many more households. They said hand it to one of the gentlemen. It's essentially still kind of a water drive through, um, but they're able to come with their own jugs or container for us to fill up with the water box. And then they get in their car and they're on, on their way. Thank you. It's kind of like the talk of the town. <laughs> There's a water box over at First Trinity now. Once we have trust with the community, then that opens up the ability for us to do more, to have another water box and also to create them in other places. It's our baby. <laughs> the water box is our baby. It's all of our babies. I think Ezra and Katrina are just great people. Yeah. It feels like more than just this water box. We have a good relationship with them and they're just really cool. The amount that they have been there for the community when it really needs it. They're superheroes. Okay, let's see, you do this, right? The church has a huge role in helping the community with making sure that they have fresh, clean water to drink. We as a community are coming together. God sometimes makes it so that we have to. Having this water box is a step in the right direction for helping those in our community who are often overlooked. I just told Drew that I personally like to donate another water box. So, um... My hope is that the city comes back, which I know it will, by the grace of God, and that the residents of Flint get a chance to have confidence in what the system has did to us over the past five years. You can't stop water from flowing, and you can't stop the support that we show each other here in the city of Flint. This is an opportunity to help create a better Flint, and that's what, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. It's gonna get better, it's gotta get better. Do you believe in my heart, it will. There are people here who are full of dreams and hopes and desires, and many of them, all they know is struggle. So these people deserve a chance. Every single time that I thought it was the end of the road, God opened another door. You have showed what it means to care, and you said this is about a mission, and it's about the mission of Flint Lives Mattering. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, they talk about America and we have our problems, but the Americans are you and I and, and First Trinity and all the others out here that are doing what we do, and it's the best place in the world to live. Now we're here and it's running, and I'm, I, I think it's the most powerful thing I've ever been a part of in my life. We did it, we just launched the water box. Yes. I'm so excited, it was a long time coming and we're here to service the community and we just hope to do more and to continue to create change here in Flint and all over the world. Clean water for Flint! Yes. <laughs> this water box is more than just a box, it's really a glimpse of what hope looks like for the city of Flint. I see hope in another generation who has chose not to leave to stick and to stay, to build. There's so much more work that needs to be done. There's so much more infrastructure that needs to be put into place. And this, we're really just hoping, is a call to action to everyone around the world to say, hey, there's all types of problems that are going on, but we can really put our heads together and make long-lasting, efficient solutions. 
We're optimistic that hopefully one of these days we can say we're out of crisis mode, but while we're still in it, we have a water box to help us.